What you see and most likely here behind me is a 2009 Apple Exerve and it's quite an interesting beast. We interrupt these messages for a wardrobe change and a message from our sponsor for today's video. Today's sponsor is Blitzwolf. Blitzwolf products are renowned for their iconic ergonomic design, competitive prices, and high performance. You can also check in the description of this video to find more information about the brand as well as the products featured in this segment, such as the wireless charging lamp that has adjustable color temperatures, brightness, and a nightlight feature. Okay, all right, you know, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do this whole video with this thing on in the background. That's just ridiculous. It's too loud. The Exerve was introduced in 2002 and lived for about eight years before being discontinued in 2010. So I bought a 2009 3,1 Exerve, the last of the breed and therefore the most powerful, to see what's cooking. The Exerve is a weird product. It was misunderstood when it came out and it still is today. I think the problem boils down to it being the wrong product for the market Apple usually reaches. Sure, it gets to pros and prosumers, but the Exerve is a straight up rack mounted server. And I'm not sure Apple's usual approach to computer hardware and software really works all that well in the server market. Sure, it's an interesting device, but it's so out of place in Apple's lineup. All you have to do is look at the product purchase page from my model to see what I mean. Whether it's the dizzying list of features and specifications, the fact that you could order your Xserve with an extra logic board, a power supply, and a fan array, or that you could drop 50 Gs on comprehensive server management support, the Xserve fast extends beyond the standard user's grasp. But today I want to try and take the Xserve back down to reality. We're not going to talk about all the fancy server mumbo jumbo because frankly I don't have the skill set to understand that. What we're going to do today is look at this thing as a standalone everyday computer. So let's break it down and talk about the specs, which are certainly understandable on a basic level. My model is running dual quad-core Nehalem Xeons running at 2.26 GHz for a total of 8 cores and 16 threads. I'm also running 8 GB of DDR3 RAM though it only populates two of the 12 RAM slots, so the system information tab does look a bit silly. For graphics, the Exerve comes with an NVIDIA GT120. Yep, that's the exact same card that was in my 2009 Mac Pro. So while the GPU itself is the same, the form factor is rather different. The Exerve GT120 shipped in an MXM form factor. This is the same form factor that was used in earlier iMac graphics, and as such it does not occupy a PCIe slot. The graphics card you see on screen is the GT120 pulled from my 2009 Mac Pro, which are fundamentally very similar, although the Mac Pro has 512 megabytes of VRAM compared to 256. The dual Xeons may also sound familiar because they were also found in the dual processor version of the 2009 4.1 Mac Pro. The RAM is even the same frequency and type. So you're now wondering, huh, this sounds a lot like a Mac Pro. You're right. Obviously, the Xserve has more server functionality, but as far as one unit functioning as a standalone computer and not in a server array, the comparison to the Mac Pro is uncanny. This is probably part of the reason why the Xserve was discontinued in favor of the Mac Pro Server Edition just one year after this model was released. So if the specs are the same, why would you not just buy a 2009 Mac Pro? Well, the Xserve is cheap, really cheap. You can easily spend two to four hundred dollars on a 2009 Mac Pro, but I bought my Xserve for just $125 with free shipping. Yeah, free shipping on that. Plus another $40 for the one terabyte hard drive module that I bought for it, brand new. 
But get this, mine got even cheaper because it shipped with two Intel Ethernet hubs in the PCI slots, so I put them up on eBay and they just sold for $70, bringing my total investment in this guy to just $95 all in. What a meme. 95 bucks for a dual Xeons in a giant rack mounted server. This thing was like $3,000 when it was new. Adjusted for inflation, it's closer to four. 95 bucks. So how well does the Xserve perform? Honestly, it's not bad. Cinebench scores yield a respectable 700 or so, pretty decent for video editing and CPU comprehensive tasks, especially for the price. Where it does start to fall short is in rendering. Because these old Nehalem processors lack Intel QuickSync, they take forever to render, transcode, and export video. Also, the graphics, the GT120, is garbage through and through, which probably didn't matter too much if you were building a 42U rack server tower, but for playing CSGO, it's not ideal. But if you do want to put another graphics card in this machine, which would probably be possible, you would have to find a one-slot card, which can be a bit tricky. Or if you really want, you could just rig up an externally mounted GPU and just go full janky style. Now, before you go out and buy an Exerve, let's talk drawbacks. And yeah, there are definitely a few. So for one, there's the size. It's hard to miss. This thing is pretty huge. It's not really all that thick, but the footprint makes it very impractical. Though, I suppose you could just slide it in a drawer like a set-top box or something. It also weighs a lot, so watch out for that. Let's say you can get over the size. You've got the perfect crevice you want to put the thing in. Fine. That's great. Let's turn it on. Yeah, it's pretty loud. I can hardly imagine the racket caused by a room full of these guys. One on its own sounds like a plane taking off. It also puts out an impressive amount of air. You could probably use this thing as a giant hairdryer if you really wanted to. In my opinion, the noise single-handedly rules out having this thing in the same room that you use it. These are some serious downsides, and they mean that this computer is impractical for the vast majority of consumers. However, if you can have it in a closet and stream the display to a TV or a monitor somewhere else, it's honestly not a bad idea. And its relatively low profile means it can be slipped behind a bookshelf if you really wanted to. Honestly, if you give me a couple hours, I could probably think of a good number of uses for something like this. I mean, the CPU is honestly not bad for just computational work it would probably do pretty well as well as just for raw storage especially considering that you can buy uh, like a little storage rack add-on thing and add like dozens of terabytes of storage to this thing then you're kind of starting to get back into server territory but i mean it is a server so you could just use it for that so should you buy an exerve that's a tough one this is a very odd device and it's out of its element in home use, but it's not a terrible idea. Especially if you can find one as cheap as mine was, it makes a pretty decent computer. I mean, for $95, the value for performance is pretty incredible, and the cost per decibel of sound is definitely competitive. If you think you can use a cheap Mac that gives decent performance and versatility, if also a healthy dose of impracticality, definitely go for it, buy an Exerve. It's a fun project, if nothing else. Honestly, I get a lot of people that wanna buy a really cheap Mac to use for video editing in 1080p. The Exerve would be great for that, in all honesty. So yeah, I mean, if you can overlook the pretty slow transcode and rendering times, the CPU is more than fine in, in Final Cut itself for doing live edits. It's completely adequate for that. So if you can get over the other stuff, Honestly, it's not a bad option. Granted, it's not necessarily as glamorous as buying a MacBook Pro, but for 100 bucks or thereabouts, it's pretty good value. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found it interesting. I've certainly found it interesting with this Exerve, although in all honesty, I haven't been using it too much. 
because it's just so loud and I don't really have the infrastructure, if you will, to stream the display elsewhere. So I just kind of have it under my desk next to the Mac Pro. So not very practical for use. Although I suppose if you're doing video editing with headphones, maybe that'll block out some of the sound. So might not be the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely tough. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Don't forget to join my subreddit down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.